Hi, Mass Barnka from Kaiser Power Electronics here. It's time to build a power supply for the induction heater. This is one of the second uh, best options, or maybe the first, when it comes to uh, building a cheap, high power, low voltage uh, supply. These are um, switchable uh, servo supplies from um, yeah, 19 inch rack servers and such, or also standalone tower servers. These are 750 watt. They can output, um, you can see here, 62.5 amp at 12 volt DC. So these can be modded to run uh, standalone. As you can see here, I put a um, jumper between the first and fourth pin on this yeah, on this, um, on this unit, which is a DPS 750 RBA. Um, now, uh, the pinout differs uh, a bit from the 800 watt model, but also the 1000 and 1200 watt models. So, uh, be sure to um, Google the pinout of the spe specific power supply that you might have, because uh, pin 1 and 4th bridge is not the solution for all these uh, power supplies. You can also find these uh, rather cheap on eBay, so if you need some, uh, look them up or yeah, just scavenge them for free if you know where to look for old uh, computer hardware. What to do is I want to put three of these in series, so I get 36 volt DC at 60 amps. So that should give me yeah, roughly 2 kilowatt of uh, power, which should be enough to power the heater with this small setup. Now, the DC output negative rail is grounded directly to the case, which is also, again, grounded back through the mains plug. So we have to isolate the DC negative rail from the um, mains ground in order to put all these in series, else we will just short circuit uh, on each uh, series connection. So, to do this, I have removed the four screws for the outer shield here. There's a small uh, isolation layer of plastic. Then inside here we have two screws over here and there's a ground wire. These uh, has to be removed and either replace uh, this with uh, nylon screws or we simply have to saw off these two standoffs and replace it with something else. So I will try to pry these two off uh, with a plier and uh, see what I can make instead. We have the jumper between um, pin 1 and 4. This is to make the power supply start up. Then we can see here this nylon nut and screw along with this one. Um, I also have a spacer underneath from nylon. Uh, I, have to, uh, I had to break out the uh, metal spacers in order to isolate the ground from the chassis. Uh, then I also removed this wire going to the control board, which was mounted at this screw. So that is all you have to do to isolate the um, 12 volt ground from the chassis. And by that we can actually put them in series without shorting out the three ground rails against each other on the chassis. All three power supplies have now been modified with the new output leads, which is a piece of uh, six square millimeters uh, copper wire with a cable shoe on. There is uh, the small jumper to make them start. So uh, let's fire them up. And I don't know if you can see it, but each green LED has turned on. So let's check the output voltage. Twelve point three volts on the first. 12.31 on the second and 12.29 on the last. So 
Now let's try to put them in series. Now this is of course just with a small crocodile lead. I will not do any high current tests, so this will do just fine for testing the cap their capability of running in series. So if we check the voltage now, we should see 36 volts. And there we have it. 36.88 volts. So this is ready to test on the induction heater. Considering that the um, laptop charger uh, power supply bank here is actually the same voltage rating as this one. These can both put out about 2 kilowatts of power. There is a substantial difference in the power density. These simply does not take up any space. So let's see how they perform. First load test of the um, 2 kilowatt server power supply bank here. I have put all three in series now, connected up to the capacitor bank. So I'll now turn on uh, each of them and we will see uh, the voltage will probably not climb up before uh, turning on all three. Ah, they actually push uh, their voltage through the uh, probably the anti-parallel diodes of the inverter, so that actually added up quite nicely. So let's try to give it a bit of load. Starts up uh, quite okay, and if we introduce a heavy load to it. Yep, voltage is steady, so I say this is ready for a good full power test.